that came on strong and fast. That feels nothing like MDMA. Effects are kind of a little overwhelming at this point. According to YouTube guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate are documentary by nature and do not glorify the use of drugs. Those abide by the community safety guidelines and are eligible for monetization. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs. Instead, attempts to be non-biased while delivering non-life-saving information disguised as entertainment. We do not display graphic use. There are no scenes showcasing drug consumption, and any insinuation of use should be taken as satirical at best. Thanks, YouTube. Hello and welcome to Psyched Substance. In today's video, we are going to be covering a compound that we have covered before, but not 100% accurately. We're going to be talking about methylone, aka BKMDMA, MDMC, M1, or just known as Molly. Why am I covering methylone again? We didn't run it through every single reagent test and show you guys what the results look like so you in fact know for yourself if the MDMA you have could be methylone, which is highly unlikely because methylone is now a very rare compound. You might find other cathinones today like 3MMC could be popular. Regardless, this is the classic fake MDMA king. I would also like to point out that I have never actually tried methylone. Now I've said that I suspect in the past I ended up getting methylone many times so to me as MDMA, but in that same past, I didn't even know that drug testing kits existed. There's a really good chance that the shit that I was getting when I was a kid both wasn't MDMA and wasn't methylone. You guys get to see me trying this junk for the first time. It's all in the name of science, right? Not using these videos as any excuse to take these compounds for any personal, you know, running away from my feelings reasons whatsoever. There's no way that I'm just some kind of a junkie in disguise pretending to play scientist over here. That couldn't possibly be the case at all. Oh boy, strap yourselves in because this is going to be a wild freaking ride. 3,4-methylene dioxy and methylcathinone, also known as methylone, is a substituted amphetamine, substituted phenethylamine, and a substituted cathinone. And the easiest way to describe its effects are to compare it to MDMA, which as you can see in my little graph here, the main difference is that uh, little, I don't know, it looks like a man with no arms popping out of that uh, hexagon over there. Yes, I'm not actually a scientist. All of this is faux, for show. Sure. However, this is a real San Pedro. In fact, I've got track pants on. What kind of scientist would wear track pants? Effects-wise, MDMA releases serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, and what the main difference is, is methylone has a three times less affinity for the serotonin transporter, meaning it's less potent overall. At least that's the comparison Wikipedia gave me. In practical terms, and from my own understanding, what this means is that methylone is not gonna hit you as hard. It's gonna be less intense, and generally it's got a shorter duration, and you basically need to take more of it to receive similar effects. I mean, since it's not releasing as much serotonin, it actually gives a more balanced effect profile, so the experience isn't going to be so... I mean, I guess mystical. There's, there's some kind of a magic about MDMA that people always talk about, and it's not really present in methylone. Methylone feels more like a stimulated fiendish high, where once you reach the top of that mountain, you really don't want to come back down, and people end up doing some crazy shit to stay up there, man. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into testing this substance. Let's see if what we got is real. Real, fake, Molly, I mean. Bam. Sad matter. So when you're testing your drugs, the first thing you want to do is find one of the little crystals. You don't need much when you're testing. People are like sometimes afraid, like, oh no, I don't want to lose any of my gold, my precious substance. But no, 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 you don't have to worry. All you do is you get a utensil such as this one. You get some of the little crystals. You want to get like a ceramic plate or whatever the f this thing is. I don't even know. And um, we're going to make a couple piles. So first we're going to test these are uh, the first three, which is the most common reagents that most people have, which are Marquis, Mech, and Mandolin. And then we're going to move on to some of these others because in fact, the only way to differentiate methylone from something like ethylone or butalone or all of these goddamn alones is to use as many reagents as you see here. Yeah, you gotta buy this shit. I mean, that, if, you, if you're trying to really actually accurately know what you're taking, you gotta put in the money to care about your life. I mean, it's that simple. You're gonna put in the money to buy the drugs or to mooch the drugs off your friends or to steal that money out of your dad's pockets while he's sleeping. Nope, never done that. Then you need to also put in the money to buy the safety equipment, in this case, these liquid reagents, so that you can ensure the drug you're taking is in fact the drug you're taking and you're not going to f die. It's that simple. And that is why I make these videos. It is not to have an excuse for my drug addiction. Up first, we got the Marquis. 
Now, what we are hoping to see is a yellow reaction. All right, let's go. Yep, she's turning yellow. That is definitely yellow. As you can see, it's uh, fizzling, and it basically went instant yellow. Uh, next on our list, we got mech. So mech is supposed to change with time, so it's gonna start off being kind of reddish brown and then it's supposed to turn more brown over the course of like, I don't know, how many seconds, we'll just, we'll have to see. Whoops. All right, mech, what you gonna do? Why is the mech's looking yellow? Yep, uh, that's not what we expected out of mech. But let's see if it changes. Sometimes these things uh, don't exactly go as you expect, and that makes it confusing because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not. It, it could actually just have some other contaminant uh, in it, like a bit of precursor, or sometimes the color charts are actually wrong. So you, in fact, have to look up multiple color charts. But what I am seeing is it went yellow, and now it is turning a brown. If you compare the very yellow Marquis reaction to the mech reaction, it's definitely turning brown. Uh, now what is interesting is that reaction, in fact, yellow and then brown, is what ethylone is supposed to do. Now, <laughs> if this is in fact ethylone, the main difference between methylone and ethylone, besides the molecule looking just a little bit tweaked from that one, is it's got a three times less affinity for the serotonin transporter. So methylone already had a three times less affinity for serotonin for MDMA, and then ethylone is another three times less, meaning ethylone is essentially six times less potent than MDMA. But again, it has an equal potency on dopamine and norepinephrine as the other two. So there's actually a chance that this is ethylone. In fact, just based off these two reactions alone, it could even be N-ethylpentylone. See, I wasn't lying when I told you guys that there was a whole range of compounds that have similar effects that all, you know, are intactogens. The mandolin might help us decipher if this is in fact ethylone or methylone, because ethylone should now change basically the same brown as that. But if it's methylone, then it should turn a darker brown than mech. So let's find out. All right, here we go. What's it gonna do? Definitely doesn't look like the same type of reddish brown uh, that we just saw. In fact, the, the brown that we just saw since it went from yellow to kind of like a reddish color may actually indicate that it is methylone. Um, there really wasn't much reddish looking in the ethylone diagram. However, at this point, it is a little confusing to say the least. And now as we slowly watch the mandolin reaction, it's, uh, it doesn't appear to be turning that dark. Yeah, it seems now that we've waited a little bit longer, uh, the, the mech is definitely more reddish. And according to the diagram I'm looking at, ethylone isn't supposed to turn reddish at all. So it is kind of looking good for this being methylone. It seems we just had to wait a little bit. Next up, we got the Freud, and this should turn yellow. Now, our Freud's looking a little black, meaning it's kind of running short on its lifespan here. Should still see a yellow. And there we go. It, it looks like it's turning straight to black or green, but it's yellow around the edges. Well, that's interesting. Totally unexpected. Let's uh, let's check the internet and see. It looks exactly like the bunk police uh, reaction. There you go. Just like I said, if you look at just one chart, the results can vary, which is not safe. All right, moving on to a Liberman. Let's see what Liberman has to tell us. What information do you have in store? So Liberman is doing similar to the Freudian. It's yellow with a dark. But this is not green, this is yellow on the edges with like a brownish in the middle. There we go, yeah, this is like brown with yellow. It might actually just turn completely brown. Once again, that is what it's supposed to do. Now we're gonna move on to Simon's A and B, meaning you first put a drop of A, followed by a drop of B. There's A, and let's go for Simon B. What the heck was that?
it's kind of not much of a point anymore because uh, all of our tests, except for that one weird one in the beginning, which um, wasn't actually weird, it was just the chart that was probably messed up, um, is, is indicating to us that this is, in fact, fucking methylone. In case you can't tell, I'm, I'm shocked. I honestly have no idea what the Simons reagent is doing. I don't think it's supposed to have much of any reaction, so uh, that kind of lines up. And following, we've got Robidope. Uh, again, with this one, we're not supposed to see anything really change, so there's the A. As you can tell, I'm pretty much convinced at this point that it is what it's supposed to be. And then B. And let's wait. I'm not supposed to see much of anything happen. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that. Well, there you go. It looks like we have um, no methylone. I guess the next step is uh, weighing out the dose. What I also would advise is testing with a fentanyl contamination kit because there have been a lot of drugs that have been contaminated with fentanyl, meaning dealers put a little bit of fentanyl in there, so you're actually getting a mix. Now, this has already been tested with the fentanyl kit. I don't wanna have to go through that all over again on video, um, and it came out negative, no fentanyl in this. So yeah, so if you wanna support the channel and also be safe with your drug use, buy your test kits from the link below, and you can help doing both at the same time. Thanks, guys, and let's move on to... I'm gonna regret this, weighing out our dose. All right, now a common dose of methylone is 150 to 225 milligrams, at which point it enters high dose territory. I would, uh, you know, personally say a high dose would be anywhere from 250 to 350. I've seen a lot of people take doses in that range. So what we are going to do for the sake of this test is we are going to sit at a level 200 milligrams, we'll go for 200. That should give a fair indication of effects without being underpowering or without being overpowering. That should probably be, for me, my body weight and everything and my past history, that should be the sweet spot to accurately demonstrate what the effects of this very bizarre, rare, counterfeit molly, real molly, MDMA substitute yeah, are like. There we go, we're at 120, we're getting there. Man, that's almost the whole bag, there's not a lot in here. I'm just gonna use one little crystal. Bam, there we go. Those are micrograms. That, that last number is micrograms, which you can't expect to be accurate. Um, so yeah, there's 200 milligrams, almost to the T. Or I would suspect there's, uh, I don't know, maybe 100, just over 100 milligrams left in here. I find it interesting to note that already my heart rate is, uh, has gone up to 77 beats a minute. Uh, meaning in anticipation, I've gotten a little nervous. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take these crystals and we're actually going to dissolve them in water. Let's mix all this in. All right, most of it has dissolved. There's just a few bits left, but that is okay. Time is 3.55. Both do and don't want to do this. A large part of me doesn't, um, but you know, for science, let's see what these effects are for science. I want to point out that I don't advise that anybody watching follows in my footsteps and has these experiences. I am documenting and showing you guys what these effects are so you don't have to and so that you know what to expect if you do plan on taking these compounds yourself. It appears that I am the guinea pig. Bottoms up. <sighs> Tastes kind of like piss. I think it's safe to say I probably got all of it. I already feel sick to my stomach. 355. Okay, I'm gonna report back uh, when I feel the effects. It's only been eight minutes so far, and I've already clogged the toilet. I just want to note that I'm over here in the stinky washroom, and it's been uh, it's been about 15, it's been 14 minutes, and I'm already starting to feel something. Okay, let's um, let's run back to the camera. Feeling a little pukey. I'm not gonna lie, we are. Just barely 20 minutes in, and I'm feeling very nauseous. The effects are very strong already. Just gonna breathe. Feels like my heart is pounding out of my chest. Okay. Yeah, we can deal with this. We're good. We're good. Feeling pretty shaky.
Well, that came on strong and fast. That feels nothing like MDMA. Very, very different. Much more uh, stimulating at this point, like... I already feel like I want to move around. My, my heart feels like it's going a mile a minute. Let's see what my heart rate is. My Apple Watch says my current heart rate is 134 beats a minute. It's going up to 135. It's a little concerning, 137. We're going to focus on some deep breath exercises to um, potentially combat this. I'm going to put the head thing on, so if I move around, you guys can see what I see. Okay, so far this is very unusual. I do not normally get any nausea whatsoever from these things. Effects are kind of a little overwhelming at this point. I don't feel this way on MDMA. I don't know how to describe the, the difference at the moment. Um, let's move this mic aside for now. I just want to be clear to anybody who might be considering that I play these effects up for the camera. I am 100% acting. I have taken nothing. This is just a show. And you know, we try to show you guys an estimation of what these effects are. Um, but, but really, it's all an act. I mean, I can go back to normal at any time. Uh, so this is me throwing the YouTube personality back on and no longer faking being on anything. Um, I could even go do my intro right now and look completely normal. In case you can't tell, this is me trying as hard as I can to be normal. Or, or to keep the, the, the hello, welcome to site substance. Uh, my jaw wants to do this. That is, that is what it wants to do. It wants to go like this, open up and down, and uh, all I want is some freaking water. The water's warm. Mm. So what this would be called is the come up phase. So uh, it's lacking the warmth that MTMA has. Instead, it's just a very intense sensation right here. Kind of feels like a ball. 423. We are now at the 30 minute mark. Wow. Drinking it, like, it pretty fast. So what I'm going to do now is to actively try to calm down. I'm going to sit here and focus on having some very deep breaths. You can actually control your nervous system, or at least... Well, yeah, control, influence, kind of the same thing by breathing slow, rhythmically. I learned this from meditation, so I'm almost going to do a little meditation now to calm myself down, because this is um, a lot more intense than I anticipated, really. All that work, and we only got her down to 128. Okay. All right. Back up. Now we're at 129. So what, what can happen that's kind of scary on these substances is you can become obsessed with uh, something like your heart. And that's honestly why some people have a bad time, because like 132, see, it's going up. Is it the substance or is it me? I don't know, but it's like I can feel it in my stomach. To be totally honest with you guys, I feel more anxiety taking these compounds than I do psychedelics. And it's largely because I know if I take acid, I'm physically safe. Like it can't physically kill me. Um, but things like this can actually be physically dangerous. Yeah, who would have thought? Um, in average doses, you're generally fine as long as you're not mixing things. Probably the most uncomfortable thing right now is sitting here. Here we go. Um, I find it interesting that there's this notion that when you take these MDMA-like compounds, these intactogens, that you always feel good. Because I want to point out right now, and this isn't just like, you know, covering up for the cameras. I don't feel good. Like, I'm not feeling any real euphoria. I kind of just feel a lot of physical discomfort. And um, sometimes that's what the quote come up is. Um, but what things like methylone can feel like is they can just feel like a come up that never, that never reaches like any kind of a peak. Like it can kind of just feel uncomfortable and then it just drops off and then you feel like normal again. Um, let's hope that doesn't happen. Definite increase. Increase in energy. Hi, camera. But I, I do, in a sense, feel like I'm, I'm waiting for something to feel good, and I don't, I don't know if it will. There's this, there's a sense of like impending eu euphoria, like when it comes to euphoria. Like if you want to talk like straight, just being straight up with you, honest. I felt more euphoric than this on my daily Vyvanse dose. So we'll see if this changes. But when I was taking 50 milligrams of Vyvanse a day, I actually felt better. Amphetamine. 
which is prescribed for DHT. Felt more euphoric than um, methyl. And you could argue and say, oh, I've got, um, I've got a tolerance to it, but I haven't taken Vyvanse for over a year now. It's been a while, so no, I don't, I don't have any tolerance. Um, it just goes to show how all our brains are different. I mean, I could be speaking prematurely. It is super early. Maybe some kind of a positive effect will happen. Um, but so far, it's just a buttload of energy. Some people attribute energy to a uh, euphoric feeling. But I'm, I'm not getting that. I just want to walk around in circles. We are now 50 minutes in, and I would say that uncomfortable peak phase has ended. Um, yeah, see, my heart rate is down to six minutes ago, it was at 105. But I swear to God, as soon as I go to check it, it goes up because I instantly get nervous. But at six minutes ago, when I wasn't thinking about it, it was at 105. Yeah, see, now it's 117. The second I think about it, it's like, hey, we're going up now. Um, it's very important to stay hydrated during these experiences. I need to drink. I hope you can drink food color. I hope this sledge that I made is, um, it's safe to drink. Imagine that. Don't get hurt by the compound, but I get hurt by the, um, the prop. Why do I do this? Why do I do this to myself?